Hey guys, this is Faye from Face World Media. In this video, I'm going to show you the technical setup, microphone, speaker, camera, so that you can be so confident in setting up your first, second, or enhance your existing hybrid Zoom meetings. This very setup also works for Zoom webinars, Zoom events, and frankly, it's going to be really helpful, no matter the platform of your choice, to run these hybrid virtual meetings. <laughs> First of all, what is a hybrid Zoom meeting? Simply put, you have people on a call sitting in front of their computers at home remotely. And at the same time, you have a group of other people sitting with you in the same room. So it's a shared virtual meeting plus people in the physical space. First, let's talk about microphones and speakers. I'm speaking to Zoom hosts who are managing these hybrid meetings. So let's say you're leading the meeting as a host, as a moderator, as a speaker, you have to make sure that people can see you, can hear you, and other people may need to participate in the room with you as well as remotely. We have seen these old school conference microphones and speakers and they work fine. But these days, I'm going to show you a number of selections right here that you can purchase on Amazon. First is this very affordable Anchor Power Conference Bluetooth speaker phone, has multiple mics, enhanced voice pickup, and it's quite affordable. And there are other products like this in the market as well. Next is this Logitech conference video webcam. It has built-in speakerphone as well, and the camera is really convenient so that you don't have to hook up another camera or mount it to the wall. Test them out for your environment. Your space might have very different configurations, so it's important to buy multiple products and test them out. The good news is with most online purchases these days, you're able to return the products you're not satisfied with. If you're not an audio engineer, I don't expect you to be one. Well, let's talk about the type of microphone slash speaker you'll need. There are a couple of criterias. First of all, it has to be a microphone and a speaker. As a microphone, it can capture audio voices from all around the conference rooms. So people don't have to lean in. It is not single directional, but the microphone allows voices or to be able to capture audios from 360. And ideally it serves as a speaker. So as other people calling in remotely are responding to a question or participating in your session, you want to be able to hear them, not just you as the presenter or Zoom host, you need other people in the room with you to be able to hear them too. The third criteria I would recommend is to get a Bluetooth conference microphone speaker. The reason is as you travel through the different conference rooms, it wouldn't be as convenient if it's wired. Now with a lot of wired products, I understand the benefits is that sometimes the signals are more reliable, but over the years, I got to say a lot of these Bluetooth microphone speakers have gotten a lot better. And since it stays relatively close to your computer, frankly, as long as your Bluetooth is strong, there isn't anything damaged with your uh, physical computer or a laptop, you should be fine. The second point here is about having an actual camera. Now, people who are working and dialing into Zoom remotely can be seen because they have their camera turned on, but this doesn't mean that they can easily see everyone else sitting with you in that physical space. So what do you do then? Do you wanna invite all your colleagues to sit right next to you or behind you? Of course not. This is where we introduce a secondary camera. Now, a secondary camera can be just an extra device that you plug in. For instance, it could be a secondary computer with a uh, webcam right on top of it, but don't forget this very device you have in your hand. You can see my ring light right here, but you can also call into your Zoom meeting right from here. And that's one benefit of Zoom is that you can join your own meeting. I'm gonna show you real quick inside of Zoom how you're able to hook up a secondary device. So in terms of adding an extra camera is that you can simply call into your own Zoom meeting with your phone and then you can put your phone either leaning against books, which I don't recommend. Instead, just get a tripod. There are a variety of tripods available on Amazon and I'm going to list some options below. They're regular standard size tripods. Those are really convenient. They can stand on the ground or you can shorten them and they can be put on a desk. There are also other mini or what we call travel tripods that they will sit really nicely on your desk. I personally prefer the standard size just so that as I'm moving around from space to space, it will give me so many different options whether to film while as a speaker I'm standing up or sitting down. So what you need to do on your phone is number one, open up your Zoom app like this, and then you're gonna join your meeting. 
then you're going to join the meeting you're currently in. Most importantly, make sure you choose do not connect audio. You only want to have one device connected to audio, not both. So if you're using your phone as a camera, make sure you do not connect audio through your camera. Here, make sure that you also start the video, right? Otherwise, people will not be able to see you. So here I am. You want to clean your lens. If your phone is rather dirty, most of our phones are because we're, you got a lot of fingerprints on it. If you're going to use your camera for best quality, make sure you actually clean it and wipe it off. So you have two cameras you can use. The front camera, what you're going to do in order to use your back camera is tabbing your phone once. Make sure you're using the back camera. A couple of things you can do on your current zoom screen. Number one, upper right hand corner from within zoom, choose gallery view. You can see now that the gallery view is showing the video that I'm trying to display to other participants, you know, to showcase people who are in the room with me. So here I have my friends, BJ, Krista and Seth Godin. And uh, obviously you don't want to be holding onto your cell phone like this. Instead, just put it on a tripod that can include everybody in the room. And I'm going to show you on the screen right now a couple of recommendations in terms of where I think it's best to place your camera. So what I just did uh, was I pinned my iPhone now on a tripod, basically. And from there, what you can do is you can increase the light. You know, you can light the room a lot better. You're able to see people in the room better that way. And I would recommend once you figure out an angle, something that works, simply just leave the setup there. You know, you can mark it in the room. You can remember it. Trust me, it takes a few practices, but you're going to get there. Number three is really critical as well is your internet connection. Now, when we have these meetings and when you have multiple devices and multiple screens, what you want to make sure is that your internet access is decent. But if you're a guest attending a conference or a meeting, you want to make sure that you prepare yourself, maybe work with an organizer to make sure you get the Wi-Fi password right away um, and to make sure that their guest network is stable and it's sufficient. I've listed in the description below for you to understand the minimum requirement by Zoom. But here, what you want to make sure is go above and beyond the minimum requirement and make sure you have relatively or very high speed internet. There's tip number four here is about pinning and arranging your screen. And don't forget the pinning feature from Zoom. This way you can pin a single speaker or multiple people that you would like to highlight for that meeting. Another tip a lot of people kind of neglect is the fact that all of a sudden you have this presentation that's taking over the screen. A lot of people don't realize that there is a slider between the presentation and everyone else. And you can easily and freely slide that around to achieve the results that are best for the recipient. I personally like to have the presentation not necessarily take over my screen. I like to see it big, clear enough, but I also like to see everyone else. Now, how can we not talk about projectors or large displays? Those are really good add on for hybrid Zoom meetings, but not every small business can invest in this upgrade right away. This means that the team will need to work around smaller shared screens. If an existing projector or screen is available, you can easily connect or airplay using Apple TV, for example, or similar devices to project your Zoom screen onto the bigger screen. This way, people inside the physical space can all face forward towards the big screen instead of staring into their laptops and be more connected that way. Now, a mega upgrade from a regular projector or screen is called NEAT, N-E-A-T. Neat symmetry presents everyone in the meeting room equally up close, whether they're sitting, standing, or moving around, focusing on whoever's talking and the expressions of others. Neat symmetry enables remote participants to engage in more natural, free-flowing conversation. I'm so glad you stuck around. And the tip that's really, really important is do not complicate things. You can do so much with the devices, with the setup you already have. The conference microphone speakers come in a variety of shapes and prices. You can grab a couple of them and decide to invest the one that you really like and works for your setup. Beyond that, you can do so much with, you know, just your camera. A lot of these tripods cost $20, $25 on Amazon, even the full size ones. So before you go crazy and spend hundreds or maybe thousands of dollars trying to upgrade everything, just start with the basics. Once you like your curtain setup, you can really beef it up with other things. Try to go wireless if you can. That'll avoid you from tripping over things and just make your setup way more flexible 
and versatile. If you find this content helpful, I also highly recommend that you check out our brand new Ultimate Guide to Zoom 2022. Inside that guide, you're going to find all the existing and new videos that I produce for Zoom, Zoom webinar, virtual moderation, and beyond. This way we can grow together and run not only the most successful virtual meetings we'll ever have, but also to attract the right clients and to be able to grow our business, work from anywhere, and to be able to celebrate our creative and financial freedom. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I'll see you next time. Mwah.